It's about a quarter after six and time now for What's Trending. Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey is putting his first ever tweet up for sale and it's actually expected to fetch millions. Check this out. Dorsey is selling the tweet as a non-fungible token or NFT, which means it is unique, authentic and verified. The first tweet came out in 2006 and Dorsey wrote, quote, just setting up my Twitter, unquote. Bids went up on Friday, and there's already bids as high as $88,000. The NFT comes with Dorsey's signature on, on blockchain. That's a digital ledger used in cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. So far, the top bid is $2.5 million from Sina Estavi, the CEO of Bridge Oracle. The auction is currently underway on a digital platform called Valuables. But uh, you guys, this is just a very interesting. It's, it's cool to kind of learn a little bit about the history um, that Twitter started all the way back in 2006 you know it seems like just yesterday but yet it was so long ago um, and I can't believe that what the asking price is for it and, and the, that people would actually want to pay that much money uh, just to say that they own the, you know the first tweet but I mean you look at it today uh, Twitter has definitely grown to be one of the most uh, prominent social media outlets uh, that we have today Devin yeah without a doubt Peter and I remember way back when, when I was in a junior high and myspace was a big thing and the next right. thing you know Facebook comes out Twitter comes out snapchat it just TikTok, it just keeps going on and it's like what's next at this rate and I agree with you you took the words right out of my mouth who pays that much money i know i wouldn't for just a simple tweet like that well yes it's historic why <laughs> i don't get it i guess people who have the money to spend right yeah I, I mean i would save that money for something really cool that might i don't know help myself out or maybe you can help save money to help yourself out peter but i just don't know like this seems like you're throwing money away for no good reason in my opinion <laughs> i think you know what devin you should tweet about it yeah, maybe I should tweet about it. That this, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just, that's just too good. That's funny. Uh, this next story is also too good too. Maybe people are going to be fighting over that tweet too. As some as in this next story, although not people, you have to see how this works. Baseball fans in Scottsdale, Arizona, went to a Cubs Diamondbacks game yesterday afternoon, and a fight broke out. Well, maybe not what you think. A goose fight. A, a few of the waterfowl, probably prepping for their annual flight back north. Got a little territorial on the outfield grass of Salt River Fields Ballpark. Fox Sports Arizona cameras caught two geese going after each other. <laughs> One lucky bird goosing another and coming away with a beak full of feathers. That's not good. The geese not phased by the national pastime going on all around them. Some were camped out in the outfield for a majority of the time for the game, and there was actually a delay for the game until the geese were caught, but don't worry, they were released safely. These combative Canadian geese apparently love baseball, and yeah, I mean, I, I've seen those geese many times before, and uh, I think I even saw some up in Iron Mountain about a couple weeks ago, too, which is kind of weird for this time of the year, but yeah, they get territorial. Like, if you get near them, especially the, the ones raising a nest, they get vicious, so yeah, you want to stay as far away from those as possible if they are definitely raising your young, but otherwise, they're pretty cool, but don't make them mad. That's kind of the key word, which <laughs> that, that's where social distancing comes in forever, <laughs> if you ask me. Yeah, I think I will forever social distance from geese. Remind me not to get in any fights with them. Uh, they look pretty uh, pretty vicious, but beautiful animals, but uh, I don't think I want to pick a fight. I just love that you know they had to actually delay the game because of it. Um, I wonder if there's ever been any kind of uh, goose fighting delay before. That's I just so funny. I don't know. I've never heard of that before, but I think it's very funny, too. I mean, we've heard of other animal delays like cats and stuff. Uh, right. I know NFL with their cat delay a couple years back. That was too yeah. funny. Yeah, that was that was priceless. <laughs> well, from geese to dogs, the Iditarod, Alaska's legendary long-distance sled dog race, began on Saturday despite the threat of COVID-19. The route, usually almost 1,000 miles, has been modified to avoid most communities and will be roughly 100 miles shorter than usual. A reduced number of 46 seven mushers include 13 women and 12 rookies. They lined up in Willow, that's about 75 miles outside of Anchorage, before hitting a new out and back trail. The main concern was COVID-19 precautions. However, racers weren't phased during the competition because they spend most of their time with their dogs. And next year, they plan on having all staff and racers tested for the virus because they want to have an even bigger competition. Um, but, you know, so cool to see that getting underway despite coronavirus. Um, obviously, I'm, it's, I'm sure it's one of the more safe uh, sports and, and events for this, uh, this time right now as everyone's kind of social distance, um, you know, naturally due to that. But uh, really cool to see it still getting underway. And uh, those dogs just look really excited to take off there. Oh, without a doubt. Maybe, maybe Simba should be one 
of those dogs here because I know Simba has a lot of energy. <laughs> yes, I know he does. This is where the, th the, the blessings of dog parks come in handy. Dogs can interact and uh, burn off some energy too. But yeah, maybe burn some energy in that regard too. That's really cool to just see that. And yeah, anything outdoors is good right now.